This is Tumani Kumar, and it's time to open up the briefcase with Casey Holdall. Greetings, Blizzard fans, and welcome to the briefcase. Episode 98 of the briefcase, and an all pre draft workout edition of the briefcase. I am your host, Casey Holdall. It has been far too long. We're less than two weeks away from the 2024 NBA draft. Your Portland Trailblazers with the 7th, 14th, 34th, and 40th picks still determining what they're going to do when they're on the clock come the 2024 NBA Draft, which begins June 26th at Barclays Center in Brooklyn and then continues the next day, second round, somewhere in Jersey, I believe. We'll look at where the Trailblazers are at in terms of their pre-draft workouts and hear from four of the players who have come through Portland recently on this edition of The Briefcase. By my count, the Trailblazers have held six public workouts with 31 players so far throughout their pre-draft process, though with, again, about 12 days left before the NBA draft. I'm guessing they're probably going to have maybe a few more workouts. Not sure if those are going to be public or private, but I'm guessing they will have them either at the practice facility or maybe even someplace else. It's very common for some agencies to have workouts. Teams will go to those gyms, watch those workouts rather than have players jump from one city to the next city to the next, which is fairly common, but at a certain point, it's probably a bit diminishing returns. So if you have everyone in one place, that makes it a little bit easier. I haven't heard about any of those group workouts just yet this year. I wouldn't be surprised if they've already happened. A lot of times those happen earlier on in the process anyways, but either way, Trailblazers are still very much determining what they're going to do with those four picks, both in terms of which players they might pick and what picks they might use as assets to acquire other players. The majority of the pre-draft process is figuring out what you have in terms of the players who you think are going to be on the board when you're on the clock. But another pretty big part of it as well, it's obviously a huge asset acquisition time of year. Other than the deadline, the draft is when most trades do get executed. So not only do you have to be ready to pick players, but you also have to be ready to potentially trade players or picks or both should the opportunity arise once the draft starts. And on that front, not a whole lot of rumors just yet about what the Trailblazers might do with their pick or what they might do in terms of trades. You've heard a few rumblings here and there, but especially this time of year, and especially, again, 12, 10 days out from the draft, there's really not a whole lot out there that you probably should believe. I'm not saying that things aren't true. It's just at this point in time, it's much more about setting a narrative for your team than it is about letting teams know what you're interested in doing. Teams might know what they want to do. I think they would rather other teams not know what they want to do, though. So the idea that teams are putting their business out on the street right now Not really sure that's the case, which is why I don't really think we've heard a whole lot about trade rumors. Perhaps that changes once the NBA Finals are over, which is going to be sometime here in the next few days. What a bummer of a Finals, by the way. I know I picked the Mavericks in six games back before they had technically advanced to the Finals. Now I'm just going to go ahead and pick the Celtics in five games. That Boston team, I think, quite a bit better than a lot of us expected. And that Mavericks team, just not ready for that level of competition at this point, I guess. But once we get the actual games out of the way in the playoffs, then perhaps some of the attention turns to what some of these teams are going to be doing at the NBA draft, which players they're considering, which trades they're considering, what types of trades they're considering, who is looking to sign players in free agency. There's a couple guys out there looking for extensions that maybe aren't going to get extensions. Are other teams going to be able to pounce on that? A lot of business still to be figured out. But again, at this time of year, there's probably not a whole lot you should believe. As we get closer and closer to the draft, then I think those rumors start to form up a little bit, start to crystallize a little bit. This far out, though, it's all about setting the deck. It's about misdirection. It's about throwing other teams off the scent. So just consider it when you're reading any rumors, particularly this time of year around the draft. It is liar's poker. Lies are the currency of the NBA. Always worth remembering that. So at this point, as mentioned, the Blazers have held six public workouts with 31 players. We also know that they've held private workouts, or at least it's been reported they've held private workouts, and there's no reason to disbelieve those reports, that they've also held workouts for Donovan Klingon and Cody Williams, and a group workout with Ron Holland, Zach Eddy, Yevs Missy, Tijon Salen, Kaishan George, and Ryan Dunn. There's probably a few workouts we actually don't know about either, though there are a few secrets this time of year, as mentioned, at least among teams, for the most part. Everyone knows where everyone else is working out. And the reason they have workouts be private or public really doesn't have a whole lot to do with necessarily not wanting people to know about them because everyone finds out anyways. When it comes to these things, teams know these guys' schedules for the most part. They know the guys they work out with. They know the guys at their agencies. So really, I think it's more about public perception. And sometimes it's just guys don't want to have to talk to media, so they do a private workout. 
sometimes guys don't care, so they do a public workout. It's not like the media actually gets to watch the workout anyway, so it's not like you're like seeing a guy perform poorly in a workout, and then everyone sees that, and then that hurts your stock. You don't get to watch any of these guys work out anyways. We only get to talk to them afterwards, and even then, we only get to talk to some of them afterwards. So the idea of a private workout or a public workout, the media is seeing the same amount of play in a public workout and a private workout, which is none of it. The only thing we're doing is talking to the guys after the fact. Well, some of us get to watch, but we're not actually allowed to say anything, so... What's the difference? I also get the sense of players don't really mind this time around. If everyone else knows who they're working out with the seventh and the 14th pick, I think you pretty much assume that anyone who's not expected to go maybe in the top three is probably going to work out for Portland, or at least the team would be interested in having them in for a workout. And with so much variance in terms of where players are expected to go in this draft process, I imagine a lot of guys are working out more now this year than they would have in previous years. Because generally, if you think you're going to go top five in previous drafts, you usually went top five. In this draft, if you think you're maybe going to be top five, you might not get taken to 10th depending on what other teams think. So you need to work out for a large range of teams. Also important to remember too, that a lot of times these workouts are about meeting the player, getting them in your gym, and hearing what they're about as people, just as much as seeing what they can do in a 45-minute workout on the court, particularly if it's a solo workout. You don't really learn a whole lot about a player from a solo workout. You learn a whole lot more about who that player is as a person at a solo workout. You go out to dinner, you go out to lunch, you have some conversations. That's the real utility in private workouts. You're not playing by yourself in an empty gym in the NBA. I mean, you're not doing that anywhere, really. But you get a better sense of what a player has done, both by watching film and by talking to that player, than you get by seeing that player shoot a bunch of three-pointers by himself in a gym that's just full of people from the team. Being able to shoot well in an empty gym is a good thing, but there's never been an NBA game played in a completely empty gym, though some of those bubble games were pretty close, I would imagine. But either way, the utility of a workout goes well beyond what actually happens on the court. Any team that's going to put too much stock in how a player looks in a solo workout specifically is going to end up kicking themselves at some point in time in the process. Well, now let's go ahead and hear from some of the players the Trailblazers have had in for workouts recently. First off, Dalton Neck, a 23-year-old, 6'5", 204-pound guard forward out of Tennessee by way of Northern Colorado. Neck started his career at a JC in Colorado, then played at North Colorado in the Big Sky, then declared for the NBA draft, basically got feedback telling him that, hey, if you want to get drafted, you're going to have to show you can do this against better teams, against better competition. Transfers to Tennessee for his final season. Ends up winning a bunch of awards, including SEC Player of the Year, First Team AP All-American, and the Julius Irving Award. Necht showed that he could do it against better competition, now has a chance to be a lottery pick, despite starting his career at a junior college in Colorado. So let's hear from Necht as he talks about working out in front of a bunch of other guys from Colorado, what he's trying to show teams during the workout process, his history of playing better against better competition, the nature of a solo workout, the feedback he got initially when he declared for the 2023 draft, and being able to play multiple positions. Dalton Neck, Tennessee guard forward. Here's what he had to say. Well, so in general, how would uh, how did the workout go for you today? Kind of what was the vibe of it, the intensity, how you feel like you performed? It was good. I think I did good. You know, uh, you know it's always good seeing Coach uh, Bill Ups and stuff. You know, he's from... Uh, Denver and stuff, so it was cool just to be here, see the facilities, and, you know, this is my second workout, so it was fun to get after it. Do you have any kind of relationship with him? Uh, just, you know, uh, as a kid, just watching him at uh, Denver and stuff, and then, you know, he played at CU and stuff, so we'd have a couple of connections with him, met him a couple times, so it was good. What are maybe some of the things you're trying to highlight, some of the skills you're trying to show teams that you possess in this draft? Uh, you know, just obviously people see my scoring and stuff and shooting, but... Just everything, like passing, uh, playmaking abilities and stuff like that. So just all-around game and uh, as well as showing off my defense. Dalton, you made a leap from North Colorado to Tennessee. You've got high usage, high efficiency. Can you take lessons from that and go, okay, I'm going to the next level where I've got to ratchet it up again and kind of take some of, at least some of the lessons learned of going up a level in, in competition and, and scheduling? Yeah, I think it was just, uh, you know, playing against higher competition. I feel like every time I play against higher competition, I play better. So... This is that and uh, learning and, you know, watching film with coaches. That's also helped me and then just keep developing. When you're looking at your, your career, a lot of guys in this draft, everybody keeps talking about, it's role players, it's role players. You were a guy who was a high usage guy. Do you look at that and go, sure, I can get on as a role player, but I want to be more than that because obviously I showed already at the last level that I can be more than just a role player. Uh, I'm going to do whatever the team needs me to do. So if that's being a role player or whatever it needs to be, I'm going to go do that and do it at the best ability I can do. 
I don't know if you talked with uh, Joe at all, but obviously he, the GM, obviously from Colorado too, and yeah, he's mm. from pretty close to where you're from. Yeah, he's from my hometown, yeah. exactly from yeah. it. Okay, I live like yeah. a couple blocks away. Does that excite you at all to you know have like obviously Chauncey mentioned already, but to join this kind of Colorado crew that got building here? Oh yeah, it's crazy, you know, uh, right down the street from me, so it's kind of cool just uh, you know talk about that stuff, type of stuff, and you know, I haven't been home in a long time, so it's kind of good just to see that. What did you learn from that first workout that maybe you applied to this workout here? Say what? what did you learn from your first workout that you applied to the workout here today? You know, obviously the first workout was kind of nervous, but uh, just kind of just taking it all in, just kind of enjoying it and seeing, you know, the facilities and just going out and competing by yourself. You know, you're one on oh, so it's a little bit different, but. You know, the coaches are real competitive and you get to, they try to go after you, so it's good. Yeah, I guess what are these solo workouts like when you know you have all eyes at the gym on you at all times? Well, it's good, you know. They get to, you get to really put on a show and show the coaches and the GMs and stuff what you're about. When you, your last year at Northern Colorado, at that point in time, did, do you feel like the NBA was, was a real possibility for you? Where were you at in terms of, of what you thought your future was going to be at before you went to Tennessee? Uh, you know, I put my name in uh, the draft and talked to some agencies, and they told me I had to go to a higher market and play against better competition. That's what I did. Took a uh, bet on myself and paid off pretty good. So it was played out pretty good. So that's all I got to say. <laughs> what kind of feedback did you get from teams this year at the Combine compared to what you maybe got the year before when you thought about it? Uh, you know, just a lot of good stuff. You know, they said a lot of good uh, things about it, uh, about my growth and stuff, and how I kept playing good against the good competition, the better competition, and stuff like that. So it was kind of good just to see that. How do you view yourself positionally? Are you just a shooting guard, or can you play the three at this level? Uh, I think I can play two and three, and then if I have to, I, can, I think I can play the one. You know, big guard, I played it at Tennessee a little bit. So I think I could play I'm real versatile. You know, on the same lines as that other question, I mean, you were started in well, Northeast, the Juco out there. I mean, what, what were your kind of thoughts when you were playing there? You know, what was, you know, how were you able to just kind of keep this belief? Uh, you know, I just had a lot of hard work. Uh, believed in uh, what my parents said is, you know, if you stay in the gym, you're going to get what you want, and it paid off, you know. So just always uh, staying confident in my craft and always putting in the work. All right, there you go. Dalton Necht out of Tennessee discussing his workout with the Portland Trailblazers. Next up, Jared McCain, a 6'2", 197-pound guard out of Duke, 20 years old, participated in a group workout with the Portland Trailblazers. McCain played quite a bit of off-guard at Duke, so during his workout in Portland, wanted to showcase his ability to play both guard positions, while also showcasing his shooting ability, which is what he's most well-known for at this point in time in his career. Though also an underrated defensive player as well, and also a very good rebounder, particularly for a 6'2 guy. He also discusses what skills teams want to see from him during workouts, being curious, which is something that my coworker and fellow podcaster Brooke was interested in, and playing both guard positions. Now that he's getting into the NBA at 6'2", playing off the ball in the NBA, probably going to need to be more of a ball handler in the NBA, so that's something he's trying to show during this workouts. Let's go ahead and hear from Jared McCain, once again, 6'2", 197-pound combo guard out of Duke. Um, how did today go for you? Great, great. You know, just trying to get some live action stuff, um, good to compete. Uh, yeah, it was a great day. Uh, what are some of the things you want to showcase? You know that you're talented at, that you're, you're proud of. Yeah, just showcasing my, my shooting ability. Um, I feel like I wasn't able to do on ball stuff a lot at Duke, so I think showcasing that I can handle the ball and make good reads off pick and rolls, just driving to the hoop, uh, finishing, uh, just kind of all around. What kind of feedback have you gotten from teams during the process? Or like how many, like how many, first of all, how many of these workouts have you done so far? Yeah. What kind of, like, what have you kind of heard from teams about, you know, what they like, what they think you need to yeah, this is this is my second. Um, yeah, just to improve, they want to see me play defense against smaller, quicker guards. Um, you know, rebounding has been one of my most translatable skills, that and shooting. So just continuing to show that I can do that um, at a high level, and then obviously just playing defense and, and making reads off on the ball. How do you see yourself fitting in the NBA? Um, yeah, I think I think a sh- my shooting is going to be the one that 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 leads me to the floor. Being able to communicate well on defense, be a team defense player. Um, yeah, I think me being young, I think I come into the league just ready to learn, and then I think I can use my, my shooting and just being curious, and, and that'll lead me to being playing minutes. In terms of which guard spot leads, just some bounces from the one and the two, or? Yeah, I, th- I think a little bit of both. Um, I feel like I can play on the ball and off the ball. Um, I think off the ball is probably what they see more in college, so that's probably where I start, but I think I can obviously transition to being on the ball as well. I don't, I don't often hear people say uh, that they're like they want to show that they're curious. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I think coming into the league, like, 
some people would think, you know, they're the best player in the, in the league already. And, you know, you can have that confidence. Of course, you want to be the best player. Uh, but I think listening to your vets and being curious, showing that you want to learn more, I think is, is great for um, your development over time. You just seem like, in our short time together, you seem like a happy individual like what's your personality like yeah I get that from my mom and dad um just just be positive man it's just so it's something that I try to bring everywhere I go it's a positive outlook on life um gratitude is something I'm really big on uh so I just try to bring that everywhere so there you go Jeremy Kane freshman guard out of Duke now on to another Dukey Kyle Filipowski is a 6'11 248 pound forward center out of Duke 20 years old played two seasons for the Blue Devils recently had to work out a group workout in Portland, actually the most recent workout in Portland just this last Thursday. Filipowski talks about the vibe of the workout, showing some of the skills you might have that you might not have been able to show in games, and the requirements of being a center in today's NBA. Here's what Kyle Filipowski had to say about his group workout with the Trailblazers on Thursday. Uh, well, Kyle, first off, how do you feel like the workout went for you, just in terms of both what you performed and just the intensity of the workout? Yeah, I think uh, I think it, was, it went really well. Um, I think... Uh, you know, just the vibes in here were great. You know, just play with a positive attitude. Um, you know, play, had fun, had fun playing today. So it was really good just to just to feel that in, in this gym. And and you know, uh, you know, we're here for a reason. You know, we worked hard to get here, but also still enjoying this process. Um, you know, and of course, everything else comes with, with that, with like hitting shots and the competitiveness, uh, and things like that. What kind of feedback have you gotten from teams throughout the process? Yeah, I mean, just. <laughs> Uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't really, um, I haven't really heard much. I've just been so focused on going from workout to workout, um, you know, but I'm sure my agent will fill me in sometime soon. How many workouts have you had so far and how many do you have left to go? Yeah, this was, this was my fourth one. Um, I have four more to go, so I'm about halfway through. What are you showing in workouts that essentially you couldn't show at Duke? Because I understand. Of, of, of what? Team I understand. I understand. Yeah. Um, I think just, I think a lot of it is just my, just how well I can shoot the three. Um, you know, obviously, like you said, you know, you're, you're, you're playing a certain role every night. Um, you know, sometimes I may shoot a lot of three, sometimes I may not. Sometimes, you know, I'm being u- utilized in different ways. So I'm, I'm glad to be able to show how, how well I think I can shoot the three. Um, how well I can just pass the ball, how I scan the floor and, and, and read the, the court with the spacing. Um, but also too, just with, my, just with my versatility on defensive end too, with trying to guard the perimeter and, and, uh, and the rim as well. You talk about versatility. What, what's it like to be a big man in, in the modern basketball? I mean, you guys are asked to do so much more now than it seems like you were even three or four years ago. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure it's way better than what it was. <laughs> um, Obviously, you know, you get to shoot threes if you're capable of doing it. Um, but also, you know, that comes with having to be able to switch on, on guards as well. So, you know, it, it comes on both ends of the floor, just the expectations to play in the NBA. And so you got to work. I think, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm sure they had to work really hard with what they had to do, like big guys in the past. But, you know, you, I think you got to work a lot harder of, of maintaining that all around game. Um, you know, there's a lot more that you need to focus on, I think. There you go, Kyle Filipowski, 6'11", 248-pound forward center, sophomore out of Duke. And finally, Tristan Da Silva, who is having his second workout with the Trailblazers in the last two years. Tristan Da Silva initially declared for the 2023 NBA draft, decided to go back to Colorado for a senior season. He did work out for the Trailblazers during the pre-draft process before he decided to go back. This time, first rounder, potentially a lottery pick, 6'9", 220-pound forward out of Colorado, 23 years old, German national. During the course of his interview, discusses the difference between when he worked out for the Trailblazers last time to now, how he improved by going back to Colorado for another season, how he would describe his game, and the skills that he feels like are most applicable in the NBA. Here's what Tristan De Silva had to say about his second workout in the last two years with the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, Tristan, so first off, how do you feel like the workout went for you, both in terms of the way you performed and, and just the, the workout in general? Yeah, I feel like it was pretty good. Uh, you know, guys got after it. Um, really competitive group. Uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, teaming up uh, with, with people that I played against, uh, people that I know, um, and playing against people that, that I know and, and heard of. This is your second time working out in this gym, if I'm not mistaken. How, how, how much different is it this time around than the last time? It's nice, because last time I didn't get to, get to talk to the media, so... <laughs> um, 
No, nah, I mean a lot. A lot has changed. You know, my position, uh, the position that I'm in. Um, you know, the the seriousness that I go about uh, that I go about my business with. Um, and you know, I'm 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 real comfortable. Obviously, being in here uh, second second time um, for a second year in a row feels feels pretty good. How do you feel like you've gotten better? Be from you know last year when you started to go through this process and then decided to go back to school and now you're going through it again. Like, what do you feel like? You know, you're a better player now than you were then. Yeah, I mean, just you know, maturity in my game, uh, more experience, uh, getting older a little bit, um, and just playing at a, at a high level. You know, I feel like, especially this year at Colorado, we had a lot of eyes on us, um, and uh, you know, playing with a lot of talent, playing at a high level, um, kind of set the stage for for what's happening this year uh, in the in the summer. What do you know about the process this year going in versus like when last year, like you wish you knew go before you and you were going into it last year? Uh, I mean, I'm just I'm just taking it all in. You know, I'm I'm, I'm grateful for the experiences that, I, that I've had last year and, and this year. You know, I'm still I'm still learning. So um, it's, it's not like I, I learned all of it last year and then came back and was the complete player. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still going through this proce- process. I'm still learning a lot and. Um, taking it day by day. What's different about your role at Colorado versus what you're kind of trying to show in workouts? If it's different at all? Uh, I mean, essentially, I'm just trying to show what I what I can, uh, what I can do. Um, you know, that 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 might vary depending on who I'm playing with, uh, the kind of situations that that the coaches put me in, and uh, so it changes from from workout to workout. I feel like, or from possession to possession, because you know I can play multiple positions, I can guard multiple positions, so. Um, it's different every time. Kind of, kind of along those same lines, how would you describe your game? Like, if, if you were going to tell someone, like, this is how Tristan De Silva plays, what, what would you say? Um, smooth game, uh, high IQ player, uh, just making the right reads, um, and then, you know, good shooter for his size, for sure. Uh, that's that's one of my strengths that, that has gotten me to this point, too, um, is being able to stretch the floor and, and knock shots down from deep. Um, yeah, and then versatility, you know, at my size, being able to, to play multiple positions, guard the ball, shoot, um, it's kind of rare. It's a little uh, Colorado West here a, l- a little bit. Did you get any uh, any pointers from, from Jabari or from Coach or anyone else? Uh, or Joe, I guess, for that matter, too. Just coming in uh, and, and getting after it, being competitive. That's what they want to see. Um, obviously, you don't you don't have to do anything outside of what you are because they've, they've seen you for, for four years uh, playing at Colorado and, I feel like that's that's what I did today. Do you have a relationship with Jabari at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my boy. Yeah. Has he been kind of hyping you up, telling you like you gotta come here, you gotta, you know? Nah, he's been he's been more telling me that he was gonna kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm uh. That's right. Yeah, we'll we'll see yeah. what happens. <laughs> So there you go, senior forward Tristan De Silva talking about his workout with the Trailblazers. Also some good stuff there with Jabari Walker. Jabari, a bit of a trash talker as well, so not surprising to hear. It's always interesting to hear guys talk about their college teammates who have made it to the NBA and that relationship. Probably some similarities between Jabari Walker and Tristan De Silva's game too. Tristan De Silva, I don't know if it's just the German part, but he reminds me a whole lot of Maxi Kleber as well. A guy about 6'9", can shoot the ball a bit, plays a bit bigger than he looks. Four real interesting prospects there for the Trailblazers. Two bigs, two guards. It's been about even for the Trailblazers as well. The group workouts are basically maybe two guards, two wings, and then two bigs. I mean, that makes sense. You're trying to play some three on three, so you need a little bit of positionality. And there's always this notion that Blazers have a lot of guards, and they do have quite a few guards. But I think particularly with one of these picks, at least the seven or the 14, you try to shoot the moon. You try to take the player you think is going to be the best player, regardless of what position they're at. And then maybe with the other pick... Maybe you look a little more positionally. Obviously, those second round picks as well, you probably use those either in trades or you use those to maybe get some players at positions where you still feel like you need some support. Blazers at this point in time in their roster building, they just need talent, period. So I don't think there's any position that they're going to say like, well, that guy's pretty good, but we don't really need anyone of that position. They're already super young. They just need talent at this point. It's not really about what are we going to do that's going to bring in a player that's going to help us compete for a championship next year or the year after that, or really even the year after that. It's more about what are the players that we're going to have here long term that are going to help us build this thing. So moving forward within the next five seasons, we're able to come together and really accomplish something. Those are the kind of players they're going to be looking for. Not necessarily which guy is going to be able to come in next season and play for us right away. That's not really where they're at in terms of their rebuild. 
And that's going to do it for this edition of The Briefcase. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Though I do want to remind you real quick that the Trailblazers are holding a draft party presented by Ticketmaster on June 26th, 5 o'clock, hosted at Moda Center. It's a free event. Anyone could go, but we would like you to get tickets at trailblazers.com slash draft. That way we at least know how many people are going to show up. Draft party, June 26th, 5 o'clock, Moda Center, trailblazers.com slash draft for tickets. Less than two weeks till the 2024 NBA draft. Then after that, about two weeks until the start of the NBA Summer League. This is my yearly reminder that the Las Vegas Summer League is a great event. A chance to get up close and personal with quite a few NBA players. A chance to see a lot of these guys as they're starting their careers. I usually go for about a week. It's probably a little bit too long for most people to be in Vegas. I probably wouldn't be in Vegas for a week if it wasn't my job. But spending a weekend or even picking out a couple games the Blazers are going to play, going midweek to Las Vegas, great time. Strongly recommend it. If you do come to Las Vegas, please send me a tweet. Let me know you're there. I'll come say hello. This Trailblazer team super young as it is. So the guys are going to be at Summer League. Probably the guys you're going to see quite a bit on the floor this year once the NBA season starts end of October. But a long time to go between now and then. Still much to discuss, much to decide. And we'll talk about those things on future editions of The Briefcase. We'll talk to you next week. I'm Casey Holdall. Go Blazers.